Welcome, welcome, welcome to Redskins Relaunch, dmvstream.com, Facebook Live. I am your host this evening, Colvin Underwood, sitting in for Winston Hilton. Another Wednesday has come, y'all, and another time to talk about the draft. Now we're only eight days away from the draft. It's next Thursday in beautiful Nashville, Tennessee, and the speculation is just going crazy now. I just don't know what's going to happen. I don't think anybody knows what's going to happen. All the, the pundits and, and prognosticators out there are trying to figure out how this NFL draft is going to go. And it seems like the Burgundy and Go are right there in the mix when you want to talk about rumors and uh, potential moves to be made. And are they one of the teams in the middle of the pack that would jump up and try to get someone that they really have their eye on? Or they sit tight at 15 and see what falls to them. Very interesting to find out. Um, lots of things to talk about with the Burgundy and Gold. The off-season training program at Ashburn has begun. So everybody has reported in uh, to do their workouts and get ready for OTAs that come up after the draft. Where they'll have the rookies that they'll draft and free agents come in. And then the bets will come in and actually have uh, a little bit more official practice. So those guys are in town at Ashburn right now working out. And I believe it's 100%. They have 100% um, participation there. I think everybody's there that they anticipate on being there. So that means Case Keenum is there. That means Landon Collins is there and a, a host of of hundreds of thousands out there so it seems so um the season is starting to heat up just a little bit and it starts when the veterans uh come in and start the voluntary workouts they say voluntary but it's one of those things where the guys you want to see maximum participation and um it's team building it's a time to kind of catch up with your teammates it's a time to get in shape it's a time to kind of start thinking about how you want the season to take shape. And it starts when you get the guys together for those voluntary workout, voluntary workouts. And, uh, you know, it's, it's the first step. It really is the first step in getting the season started. Um, so there's all kinds of things to talk about with the Burgundy and Gold as it pertains to the draft. Uh, but one big piece of news that the team got recently is that their uh, acquisition of Reuben Foster uh, looks like Reuben Foster will not be suspended in 2019. He's going to lose a couple of game checks, and that's it. And that is the best case scenario uh, for Washington. You know the team took a lot of heat in actually acquiring uh, Foster after he was let go by the 49ers. Um, you, know, you know, you know about the whole. You know problems that he's had off field and um, there was some thought maybe he would see a some sort of suspension from the league but it also looks like he's been cooperating um, with the league as far as being in different uh, programs um, to you know help out with his personal life and that seems to be working and that was one thing that was brought up in the statement that he is you know continually uh, trying to get better in some of those things that are lacking off the field. And it seemed like that might be something that worked in his favor and that he didn't get any games suspended. So that means that Washington picked up a player that they can definitely use uh, at the linebacking core. Uh, one of those positions they felt that they could shore up and foster fits the bill. Now, we don't know if it's going to work or not. Not because of the off-field things, that's something, but you know, he hadn't played, he hasn't played in a while. He didn't play all of last year, almost all of last year, um, once he was suspended with San Francisco. So he's got to get back in, get back on the field, get back into football shape, and see if he can produce. Best case scenario, this is the guy that was the number uh, the first round pick of the 49ers that has talent written all over him and can play the position and really help the team. That's what they're hoping for. And they're also hoping that you know, the former Alabama Crimson Tide linebacker can 
bond with the other Alabama and Princeton Tide players that Washington has on defense. There's one reason they were looking to get Reuben Foster is he might be able to fit in with the guys. He knows all those guys. He played with those guys from Payne to Jonathan Allen uh, to Hamilton to um, Ryan Anderson, that whole Alabama crew that uh, Washington has assembled on the defensive side of the ball and see if Reuben Foster can fit in with those guys and be a productive member of the Burgundy and Gold on defense. So Washington got some really good news in seeing that Foster can play. I know some of the off the field things are still controversial and a lot of people are wondering why he even got his second chance, but he did. Now let's see if the young man can uh, turn things around off the field and have some success on the field that not only benefits his career, but benefits what Washington's trying to do on defense. And he's going to make him, if he's half the player that he was, and he's able to kind of bounce back and produce, man, they got a they got a pretty good player at linebacker. And maybe now in the draft, that's maybe one position that's not a priority position. Maybe that's a position where you can get some depth down in you know later picks in the draft. So let's move to the draft. And another big story that came out yesterday is that Kyler Murray will not take his visit to Washington. So like the team has set up a, a meet and greet with Kyler, and uh, that is a clear signal from Kyler and his representatives is that they don't think they're going to be around at 15 if Washington's there. And that also might signal that they don't think Washington's going to move up to get him. Interesting. Very interesting. Some players take the visit because you just never know. Some teams are insisted upon getting guys to come in, even though Washington picks at 15. You think that they would still want to have a a face-to-face with the young man just to kind of see what he's about if they haven't had uh, formal discussions with him. But now he's not going to show. So maybe that's one domino, domino that's falling. Maybe now Kyler Murray's not really in Washington's plans. Or could it be a smokescreen? Could suddenly be brewing that maybe Washington is trying to move up and might have their eyes on him and they just don't want to tip their hand. I don't know. But if he doesn't think he's going to be around at 15, maybe Washington's not going to move up. And so that's been kind of the talk the last couple of weeks. Is Washington going to move up? Will they move up to get a quarterback? Whether it's Kyler, whether it's um, Dwayne Haskins, whether it's Drew Locke, or they sit back at 15 and let a player fall to them, or like most drafts go, they'll trust their board. They already know who the top 15 players are. They already know if there's somebody available that they really, really like that's there at 15, they're going to take them. They already know that. That's what the board is set up for. They have everybody on the board, and they say, okay, this guy's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Who's at 15? And what the, way, the way these mock drafts are going, it looks like, to me, it looks like it's going to be a defensive, heavy first round of the draft. Not saying there's not offensive players to be had. I think a lot of discussion is about the quarterbacks because it's the glamour position, and there's still some kind of wondering if this quarterback class is going to be worth it or who is going to emerge in this quarterback class or who's going to step up and grab somebody out of the top three quarterbacks, which would be Locke, Haskins, and Kyler Murray. A lot of the mock drafts are pointing to Arizona and saying definitively that they're going to take Kyler Murray. You're seeing a lot of that now. You're seeing a lot of that now. And so I saw the Arizona general manager played coy, and he's like, eh, everything's a possibility at number one. So if you're Arizona, you've got some options. If you're Arizona, you can you can stick with the pick. You can pick Kyler Murray. You can put him in a, a Kip 
Cliff Kingsbury's offense and see what happens. Because you would think that Kyler Murray is probably a better fit in that kind of spread, throw the ball all over the, the field offense that Arizona is probably going to implement because that's what Kingsbury did in Texas Tech. Texas Tech that had Patrick Mahomes as quarterback. So you want to draw some dots and you think, well, if Patrick Mahomes played in that system and look at him now, why not stick Kyler Murray? Like Kyler Murray is not Patrick Mahomes in any stretch of the imagination. But in that offense, it plays to Kyler Murray's strengths, it plays to the throws that he can make, and it plays to his athleticism. So if you're Arizona and you really think that Kyler Murray is that guy to run this offense, then you'll draft him. What about Josh Rosen? People are still wondering if Josh Rosen is in play. So Arizona is in a pretty good position. They have a young quarterback that people have tape on in Josh Rosen. People know what Josh Rosen can do. And this because it didn't work out necessarily in Arizona doesn't mean that if he got into the right system that he couldn't do well in a different place. Is that different place Washington? Don't know. It looks like Arizona, if they do want to move Josh Rosen, is looking for a number one pick. They're looking for a number one pick to facilitate the deal. Would you give up your 15th pick for Josh Rosen? Something to think about. Now, 15 is not going to be the only way you're going to be able to get him. You probably got to put an extra pick in there. But Washington has two picks in the third round. So maybe you package a couple of picks together and you get Josh Rosen. And then he answers your question of having a young quarterback with an upside that's smart, that can make all the throws, that Jay Gruden can either say, hey, we're going to stick you in there as our starter, or you're going to sit behind Case or Colt, or we're going to bring you in to compete and let the best quarterback win. So all those are scenarios that are possible. And then you also look at maybe Washington, if Kyler goes number one, maybe Washington would look for a team in the top 10 that you can do a deal with. Maybe there's a team there that wants to get out of one of their high pick selections and trade back down in the first round. How about a team like the New York Jets? The New York Jets are at number three. But the New York Jets don't have another draft pick until pick 68. So they're at the top of the draft, and then they're in the middle of the third round. Would the Jets be willing to do a deal for an additional pick, maybe in the second round? Or maybe take that pick at 15 and say, okay, we'll just swap picks with you. Here's our, here's one of these two or threes that we have plus our one to get to three. Wow, get to three. Can you imagine Washington moving up to three? That opens up all kinds of possibilities. Now, maybe quarterback is just, eh, that's one thing they could do, but man, you're going to be at the top of the draft board get one of those defensive linemen depend upon what San Francisco does depend upon what Arizona does so you can see there's lots of movement there's lots of lies being spread now there's lots of rumors being spread there's lots of smoke screens this is the beauty of the NFL draft nobody's tipping their hand nobody's showing all their cards so you can imagine the conversations that are being had right now about who can do what and how you can move up and how you can better the team. It has been my position, if you've seen me here on Redskins Relaunch on dnbstream.com Facebook Live, that Washington should not move off of 15. Because the way the draft is going, the changing mocks do tell you something. It does show people moving up and down the draft board. 
in this first round of this draft is so strong on defense that somebody's going to fall to Washington. Somebody's going to fall to Washington. There's There might be somebody at 15 that they say, wow, we didn't think this person was going to be at 15. So what do they need? That's an interesting question because it's changed. I think it's changed a lot in the last couple of months as we've kind of seen things kind of move around the draft. I think what everybody thought is quarterback. Quarterback, that's the first thing you hear. We need quarterback. We need quarterback. Well, what do they do? They go out and get Case Keenum. So now you have Case Keenum, Colt McCoy, and Josh Jackson. Or Josh Johnson, sorry. So you have three quarterbacks already in, three veteran quarterbacks. So maybe the need to get a quarterback at 15 isn't as great as you thought it was um, at the end of the at the end of the season. I think at the end of the season, if the draft was right after the season was over with, you would think, okay, quarterback. They've got to get a quarterback. Gala Smith is gone. We don't know if he's coming back. Colts hurt. We don't know what's going to happen with him. We got to get a quarterback. Well, now things have kind of changed a little bit. The dust has kind of settled a little bit. Quarterback, there's been some quarterback movement. Some veteran quarterbacks have changed spots. Some teams you think don't need quarterbacks might want to move up and get one of these young guys that's at the top of that draft. So if you're Washington, you kind of sit back and say, hmm, maybe we don't need a quarterback at 15. So what do you need at 15? I would say now that you have these veteran quarterbacks in, and assuming two big assumptions, you assume that Darius Geis is 100% and is ready to go. And if you see any of the, he's big on social media, the sickest one. He, he posts to IG and Twitter all the time. He looks like he's ready to go. He looks like he's springy, he's bouncing, he's moving, he's cutting, he's doing all kinds of things. And so, that's going to be a very large part of the Washington offensive picture is Darius Geis. And if he can come back at 100% in the kind of explosion in the, in the playmaking uh, ability that he brings to the offense. So that's one thing you're banking on if you're Washington. Like, we're going to get this guy back and he's going to be productive. Put that to the side. The other person I think you have to look at is on the outside. And if they can get some productivity in the wide receiver position. So last year, who did they go out and get? Who was the big free agent guy they got? Paul Richardson. They go out and get Paul Richardson. Richardson gets hurt. But his whole thing was speed. He was going to take the top off the defense and allow the offense to open up and be able to get some of those deep balls and open up the middle uh, for the other guys. So Richardson gets hurt, and now you're counting on him to bounce back and be there for you. You lost Jamison Crowder. You're on the fence about Jordan Reed because his cap number is pretty high, so if you cut Jordan Reed, you can save some money, but you still need some receivers. Vernon Davis was extremely durable for you last year and productive, but he's getting towards the end of his career, although he's a a freak of nature, and he could probably play another five or ten years the way he's built, right? But, you know, Vernon's a little bit older player, so you don't know how much you can depend on him. And then, of course, the jury's still out on Josh Dotson. So if you ask me what I think Washington needs, I think they need an offensive playmaker. I think you have to get another offensive, another offensive threat, uh, particularly on the outside. And so now at 15... There will be somebody there for you, but who is that somebody going to be? One person that's been making the rounds um, lately, I saw him on the NFL Network, and I saw him today on ESPN, is DK Metcalf. And so ESPN's running this, hey, rookie, um, welcome to the league thing, right, that they do where they actually follow these guys uh, before they get drafted, and then when they get drafted into like their mini camps, and DK and DK Metcalf is a very interesting story. 
he was hurt at Mississippi. And actually, they showed the injury. Um, broke his neck. He was on special teams. And a guy hits him kind of under the, under the chin. And his head snaps back. And uh, he comes off the field. And he's not feeling so hot. But he goes back in the game. Thought he had a stinger. Get back to the locker room. The next day, found he broke his neck. But in saying that, he has all the physical attributes that you want for somebody to play a wide receiver in the National Football League. He can run, he can jump, and he can catch. But because he was injured, and that was the only injury that he had at Mississippi, because he was injured, there's not a lot of productivity that you see on his tape. So is he the next coming of, of Odell Beckham Jr.? Or is he Brashad Perriman? You like that? Perriman? Remember? Baltimore drafted him. I think Baltimore drafted him like 10th that year. And he's not with the Ravens anymore. Wide receiver is such a hard position to draft in the league because the a we know about the A.J. Greens and the Amari Coopers. And those kind of guys, that top, and the Larry Fitzgerald when he came out, you you know about those guys ability-wise. You say, okay, their ability looks like they'll have success in the NFL, Julio Jones. But those guys, you can count how many elite wide receivers they are in this league. There's elite wide receivers. There are productive wide receivers. And then there's Josh Dodson. Okay, so you're hoping that Josh Dotson would be a productive wide receiver and he hasn't really produced a lot. Right. So you're hoping that if you go ahead and get a wide receiver, that he's going to be able to come in and he's going to have enough football experience to run the routes and be productive wide receiver for you. Somebody that you can plug in and and get something out of. DK Metcalf. Don't know if he's going to be at 15. Don't know if he's going to be at 15. Because he has such a great combine, he might be moving up the charts. He might. He might be moving up the charts where somebody might take a chance on him before he gets to Washington. Um, who else is out there? Um, one person that I'm interested in is Marquise Brown, and he went to OU. He went to Oklahoma. Uh, another, another fast guy who played with Kyler Murray and was one of Kyler Murray's favorite targets at Oklahoma. And if you look at the highlight reel of Kyler Murray, when he throws that deep ball, he's throwing it to Marquise Brown. Marquise Hollywood Brown. Hollywood. That's his middle name. So if you want a wide receiver named Hollywood, maybe, maybe not. But Marquise Brown, gets he gets a lot of high marks as well, runs the routes, fast guy, uh, played in an offense at Oklahoma that might equate to – that might equate to the NFL – one thing that you have to be careful with, now this would be the red flag for Marquise Brown. Uh, had a left foot injury and did not um, participate in like the pro days at Oklahoma. Had surgery on his left foot, had that um, lace freck, uh, lace freck um, injury in his foot. So there's one thing I don't want my receivers to have, bad feet, <laughs> bad ankles, bad knees if you're dependent upon somebody to be a speed guy you don't really want them to have a foot injury so now at 15 you say okay well maybe that's a little bit too risky for me but if the kid checks out okay healthy he's definitely a playmaker definitely somebody you want to get the ball to so I think playmaker is what they will need 
at 15. But if they went offensive line, I wouldn't have a problem with that. They need depth on the offensive line, and this isn't a very deep draft at the offensive lineman. Um, they talk about Garrett Bradbury from NC State. I'm seeing his name in a lot of mocks. Uh, he's a center, big guy, can do it all. He's seen, he's seen as the top, like one of the top offensive linemen that's out there. So I see his nod, his, excuse me, I see his name a lot really in the late first round. In the late first round. So I don't know if it would be overvalued to get him at 15, but maybe that's the kind of guy that you want to get. You play it safe, you get somebody that's going to add some stability to offensive line because your offensive line was in shambles last year due to injuries. Everybody seemed like everybody on the offensive line missed time, particularly your two tackles in uh, Morgan Moses and Trent Williams. And those are your, your bookends. you got to have those guys. And in the middle, it wasn't too much better. You lost Brandon Sheriff for a little bit of time as well. So now do you want to get another big banger in there with Sheriff and, and make that interior part of the line better? And that's going to help your running game. It's going to help your passing game, getting that pass just up the middle then maybe Bradbury's the kind of guy you want to look at from NC State. Just depends on what you think. I mean, Washington has options, and it's not bad. Like I said, I think whoever they get at 15, if they stay at 15, it's going to be able to help them. They'll get a great player. They might even get somebody that they had higher than 15 on their big board that might slide down to them because there's going to be, I think there's going to be a rush on defensive tackles. I think there's going to be a rush on pass rushers, those edge rushers. You know, he's, they're, they're hard to find. Everybody wants to get after the quarterback, particularly with these offensive that spread you out. You have to get pressure on the quarterback. Plus, you play in a quarterback crazy division where you got Wentz and you got Eli and you got Dak and you definitely want to get somebody that can get out. You can get after Wentz. All right, he's, he's, he's mobile in the, in the pocket. You know, he can kind of slide around in the pocket, but you want to be able to get pressure on him. Eli, you know you can get pressure on him. Dak is somebody that you're going to want to have to contain and be able to get a pass rush on. So you have to look at that as well when you're thinking about your picks. Who's going to help you within the division? Who's going to help you win the division? What do you need to win the division? You need a pass rush. You need offensive linemen. You definitely need playmakers. So you can score points because Dallas can score points. Philly can score points. Um, although OBJ is not there, you know, New York still got Saquon. So, you know, you're going to be facing some tough offenses. You know, you can always beef up your defense. There's going to be safety help and cornerback help at 15. You're going to get a good corner or a good safety at 15, where there's Greedy Williams from uh, LSU or another um, – Alabama person in Delonte uh, Thompson or uh, DeAndre Baker from Georgia. Those guys, there are lots of names that you see in the mock drafts. They'll be available at 15. So however you slice it, 15 is going to be a very could be a very important pick from Washington. And it's also maybe an also attractive pick for other people that might want to move up out of the bottom of the first round. Who might want to, you know, if Washington wants to get additional picks, 15 would be a great place where they might want to trade out because somebody's really looking for something at 15. Um, if one of those quarterbacks slide down, you never know. And then 15 might entice somebody to move back in the draft that's at the top of the draft, like the Jets. Right, the Jets looking for more picks to go along with all the free agency activity and cap space that they have. Maybe they want to go back to 15 as well. So that's a real quick look at the NFL draft. We got lots to talk about with that. And we have lots to talk about all over the DMV, not only with the Redskins. Uh, we can also talk about the Nats. Um, and they're kind of getting a sluggish start. Um, we talk about these guys leading 2-1 in the series against Carolina with a big game four uh, Thursday down in Raleigh. And talk about uh, Ove <laughs> Ovechkin laid up young boy out, didn't he? Better let sleeping dogs lie. Leave uh, Alexander alone. I didn't say Ovi. See, Ovi's all nice and cuddly, and Ovi, he's fun. Leave Alexander alone because that young boy got popped really well 
and you saw what happened. So we'll talk a little bit about the caps as well. This is Redskins Relaunch on dnbstream.com, Facebook Live. I'm Colvin Underwood. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. This content is brought to you by Dental Associates. For more than 39 years, Dr. Stephen Price has been practicing dentistry in Northern Virginia. A member of the American Dental Association, the Northern Virginia Dental Society, and the Virginia Dental Society, Price is considered an expert in Invisalign and continues to be an award-winning innovator in the industry. This content is...